About a year ago, we got our first look at Frozenheim and its single-player campaign, and this game does what I want more city builders to do even better. This game combines elements of strategy, city building, base building, RTS, and war, as well as naval combat, into an incredible immersive city builder that is based, of course, on Viking history and some Norse mythology. It plays much more like a realistic game and feels a little bit like Banished with elements of Frostpunk sprinkled in and of course they are billions. Now there's a new game mode or a few new things added to the game since we took a look at it back in May of 2021 and now it's been about a year since its initial release date and there's so much more added to this. Now the campaign is fantastic. The skirmish mode of course allows you to play or practice against AI and eventually play multiplayer with or against friends. But the survival mode and the city building mode are rather new and I wanted to take my first look at those today. Now the survival mode is what you would expect with trying to survive not only against the elements and gathering food and also giving everyone shelter and providing enough firewood for the homes to be warm but we'll be under constant attack by enemy invaders so we'll have to fortify our position as well in this well now city building fortress building game which of course is a part of the campaign and is something that you can do in the skirmish mode as well. But the city building mode plays a little bit more like, for example, Unmodded Banished, where it's all about building a beautiful city, but you still need to provide those basic resources and services to your people, such as, of course, homes and firewood and farming and fishing, but also gives you more breathing room to make a beautiful city and take pictures. This game has a photo mode, and this, what you see on the screen right now, is exactly how the game looks like when you're inside of it as well. Beautiful plains, flowers, trees everywhere. It's a gorgeous game but it could be a brutal one. So anyway, welcome aboard. If you guys want to see more Frozen High, make sure you click tap blow up and destroy that like button right now and support Frozenheim. It's a fantastic game. Subscribe if you haven't already, and thank you very much for becoming members. It was recently my birthday, and I'm so happy that so many of you tuned in and supported as we are now kind of taking a look back at city builders that have come back uh, out over the last couple of years, but more in the last just uh, recent years. For example, Northgard, Banished, Stronghold. Those are games, well, Stronghold being amongst the oldest, but some more recent games, of course, that have wanted me to go back uh, to Frozenheim and many other games to see, hey, what's new, what's changed, what's been added and so now welcome everyone to frozenheim survival mode so survival city builder we got it so under survival mode we can name our settlement we can give ourselves what seems to be very much the dutch flag for whatever reason just the top of it being purple but we'll go with this here we can uh, pick different maps here i think the rise of yggdrasil was uh, probably a good map here uh the skull of ysimir uh, Fendrick's Den. Wow, if you're a big fan of Valheim, I think you'll really enjoy this game as we get excited for other city builders too, like Manor Lords and, of course, many other games that have been out, as we've mentioned before, Stronghold and Banished, Settlement Survival, and many other survival-type games here on the channel. Looks like this is the base setting for the game. Medium with low starting units, endless number of waves. Oh, you can actually set it to a, 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 a survival mode of, like, a 25 if you want to. It's kind of the final mode if you want so that's kind of what makes it like they are billions in terms of defending against endless waves in this case uh, but there you go well I think these are all good for our resources I think we'll go with the uh, skull of Ysimir and see if we can go ahead and wow look at the name of that settlement no it is Raptoria glory to Raptoria down below in the comment section let's get it going as we now play survival mode in Frozenheim let's go and here we are. Welcome, everyone, to Frozenheim. We are going to get started by sending out scouts On to see if we way. can find other settlements to trade and do business with. And we better get started by building some houses to increase our population ASAP. We must be somewhere near the water, too. Uh, there we are. Yes, of course, our natural Viking habitat. So we're going to try to build ships as soon as possible. We're also going to go ahead and start hunting. But more importantly, start cutting logs so that way we can, of course... Uh, start to make more and more buildings and provide fuel for fires. Woodcutters will go down next, and this is really cool. You can actually see units coming out of the Jarl's Longhouse here, uh, which will basically allow us to then start sending out carts to gather supplies and bring those back too. So we'll start very small, and we'll get things going. Now eventually we're going to be attacked by all sorts of different uh, armies, and uh, there are also hostiles on the map too, so we'll probably find those with our scout team and see if we can go ahead and, uh, well, eliminate them so we can expand our settlement and keep our people safe so no wolves or no bears or whatever it may be stumbles into our territory look at how just gorgeous the fields are with all these flowers and rocks and yeah it's definitely not like a, a peaceful um 
plain all the time. It's rocky and, uh, you know, forested soil. Very nice alpine retreat here. Let's go ahead and continue our uh, search for stuff. We must be at the edge of the map here. I believe every time that you play, as we re recently chose the, uh, I, I think there's like a... Uh, the Yasemir and uh, Yggdrasil and all those other ones have different parameters. It's similar to how it is in Age of Empires, where if you choose a desert or if you choose a, a jungle or whatnot, uh, that's kind of what determines the um, the landscape. You can say, well, I'd like a hilly jungle or I'd like a, 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 a plains desert, that type of thing. Uh, so it'll procedurally generate based on those parameters every time. It's a pretty good spot to defend here so far. It looks I like we've got, got it. Um, water here. And a mountain pass behind us, so narrow areas to defend. We'll have our Viking warriors go out and look around. Our camera's going crazy because we're up against the edge and also up against cliffs, so that's something to keep in mind. All right, we've got to continue to have more and more villagers here. That's going to require more and more food, so we're going to try to speed up uh, gathering wood if we can. And we have lots of great things to build here, most of which can be built in Tier 1, or we can upgrade the Jarl's Homestead to Tier 2. And as you can see, the UI really is reminiscent of Frostpunk, at least in its appearance, and also how it kind of functions. But everything like, for example, houses, which can be upgraded, altars, which can lower discontent, fishermen huts and hunters huts that bring in food, of course, and then orchard, farmhouse, and windmills that provide even more food, as well as defenses, palisades, watchtowers and gates, walls of all si uh, sizes and types can be built, as well as a training hall for our troops, and also a boat, which we can use to quickly transport troops across the water. Let's go find our scouts and see if we can right. find a friendly village nearby. What is that? Oh, it looks like a wreck. Wait, is this a trader? Uh, oh, it's a campsite of some sort. There's a man sitting there. Is it, are you willing to trade? Champions! Jarl, your warriors look like weaklings. We can train them for a small price. Take these resources in exchange for combat knowledge. We'll need 10 wood and uh, 15 meat. We can't afford the help at the moment, but we will All definitely right. get to that shortly. And we'll continue to build our camp. Oh, enemy has appeared. What is that? Wolves. We got wolves nearby over here. Just off in the hills here. The wolves can also spawn from small caves. So we'll need to be on the lookout for those and deal with those with our troops. But before we do troops, we better get some more resources going. So we're going to need a collector's hut and also a... Um, let's build another woodcutter's hut because wood is incredibly important, not only for construction, but of course is for fuel, as I mentioned previously. So we're going to get another building like that up. And we're also going to get a collector's hut going so we can find bog metal and stone. Stone, of course, used for building buildings and bog metal, which can be refined into iron, which can give us more and more um, ability to build a bigger army. It looks like we have two stone deposits there, so we'll go for that. What a gorgeous looking game so far. I must say that there's seasons too, by the way. We will see it snow and eventually rain and go into uh, from summer to fall into the winter and back into the spring where there's different buffs and debuffs based on what's going on. Obviously, in the winter, things are colder, so troops uh, may move slower. Uh, gathering rates are slower and birth rates are slower too. So probably not a good idea to launch an attack in winter, but a good time to build and make sure you've got all your uh, supplies underway to build ships. A very good idea to do that. Great detail, not only on the landscape, but also on the longhouse and the buildings, too. So glad that this has gotten much more diverse than just a, a simple skirmish mode with a few extra modes that are a little bit more interesting than your typical uh, build a beautiful city or just straight-up combat. I'm glad there's a, a mix of each. Let's go ahead and see if we can buy this combat knowledge now. No, you know what? I'm going to hold off until we have troops in the uh, expectation that it may upgrade the troops that are actually going to speak with them. Let's go ahead and get a hunter's hut up now. We're going to definitely need food for sure. Let's go ahead and build that next to the uh, Jarl's house here. And we want to build compactly so that way we can put a wall around it. But this will also be a risk for fires. But it is better than being easily attacked by the enemy. We're going to go ahead and build a well here. And we'll continue to build homes over here. The homes fill up quite quickly. As you can see here, we've already got eight villagers inside the two homes. Four between each. We're going to go ahead and build another house here. Looks like the tents actually kind of change design, too. I'm sure there's a hotkey to actually change what they may appear like if you'd like to build them differently. All right, we have five people who are unemployed, so let's go ahead and get them assigned to uh, the Jarl's Homestead. And we've got the Woodcutter full, the Collector's Guild full, and I believe the Hunter's Hut employs two, possibly three. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Oh, is that a waterfall? Oh, no, it's just a uh, little bit of mist there. It is raining now. Uh, we are approaching it, as you can see at the top there, that little wheel continuously turning. 
Yeah, we've now entered the autumn months. Beautiful. Wolves are uh, around again. Okay, let's just be careful. Now, the enemy's on the way. They are coming to uh, kill us at some point. They will try to attack. We need to be cautious about that. We need to find them before they find us. In other words, maybe having defenses where we think they're going to attack might be a good idea. The well has an area of effect as well around it, pun intended, I suppose. Uh, we'll build it here next to some of these buildings and continuously clear out the trees here where we can expand our base. So let's go ahead and clean out um, Yep, that wooded area as quickly as possible. We've got 37 food and it's dwindling. I would like more population so we can get more uh, fishing and such going. Like, for example, the uh, maybe some farmers and hunters up eventually. And we have our first fire. All right. Well, good to see. Now, enemy units can also put buildings onto fire with torches, but it does take a little bit of time. But luckily, with our uh, well forces here, the firefighters, they should be able to come right over and put that out, no problem. Yep. A little bit of the building damage, but they were able to bring it back to life. Good for them. All right, we're gathering stone very slow. We also need to find bog metal on if we can see way. it on the minimap. And we are just backed into a corner here. Let's go explore up this way and see what may be up over there. Another home complete. Excellent. And to build defenses, we need to make our Jarl's homestead level 2. So we need much more stone. We're going to go ahead and build yet another collector if we can. Under our third tier. Now we're also going to need a bloomery up. And of course, that's kind of like a uh, old-timey smelter, which will then allow us to not only smelt the iron, but to turn it into usable ingots. And then, of course, the um, weapon smiths and such can turn them into axes and whatnot from our training grounds. We can have all sorts of different classic uh, Viking units, archers, and um, also uh, shield bearers and uh, axe throwers and a few other types in there as well. Wow, we're really like in a pickle here for our landscape, but that'll make it a little harder for the enemy to attack us, although I believe that they're going to just attack from here. we we'll go ahead and ask our woodcutters to just cut the nearest trees then. So we can clear out the coastline and build some fishing docks. That would be nice. We'll put some down as we have already. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous landscape. Breathtaking, really. Uh, playing this game is just fantastic for just seeing how the buildings look and how they're constructed and getting that whole feel of immersion. But also, uh, I'm glad that there's a slower mode, too, because I think this game does a great job of not only just being a combat simulator and also like a base-building, fortress-building game that also simu simulates military economy, but it's a lot of things at once. It's a little Anno, a little... Um, Maybe a little bit of Northgard in there, a little bit of Frostpunk. But more importantly, it just... It, it feels like a great combat game, too, with many options for your troops to be able to give them formations. And uh, we'll see that in just a moment. We're going to go ahead and put up our bloomery now. We definitely need to be making some iron. We've got our loggers cutting down trees. Great. Clearing out those areas ASAP. The Jarl has uh, enough iron to upgrade, but not enough stone. But we need troops. So we're definitely going to have to build a training camp as soon as we can. Let's go ahead and see if we can. Training hall is what we'd like to build next to the Jarl's uh, house there. Keep that well defended. Look at our Viking village. It's gorgeous. The units moving through the snow as they do in Frostpunk, but also reminiscent of games like Foundation or Ostrieve, where uh, people will make their own pathways based on where their jobs or their field of work is, and, of course, to go gather resources. So that's good. Now, we might see less food in the winter, in terms of animals in the forests and fish in the sea, or in lakes and rivers and such. So, glad that we've got that up so we can start the spring right next year. All right, building these units will cost us three iron. So we're gonna build two as soon as possible. It'll cost us a little bit more in uh, population too, so we must build some more homes. Homes are no joke. But once we upgrade the Jarl's uh, house to level two, we should be able to upgrade these as well. You can hear these units doing some training. Ah, oh, they look great. Everybody on a training dummy, using how, learning how to use their axes, and of course having a special ability too, which I think allows them to go a little berserk, or at least output some more damage. We're about halfway through the winter now, so the winter's not so bad, but it is a great time to train troops and to manage your city and your economy. So in this case, we've started to build more structures and start started to build the most important thing, the uh, army there. Going well. All right, now we have discontent with hunger, unfortunate. Ah, oh, there comes a little bit more food. It'll be coming in uh, dwindling little by little until we got that fishing dock uh, going a little bit more ham with the summer being here. Let's build another one. Fisherman hut over here might be a good addition. 
And it looks like the AI does a good job of trying to snap the building into place, although it tries to aim it towards another another building. Let's see if we can put this close to another one. I'm not sure if there's any sort of uh, negative debuff or whatnot for building these too close to each other, but it looks like there's resources for fish out there. So it just seems to be how quickly we can harvest it. All right, discontent will bounce around as we still build our first army. Look at these troops. Fantastic. Now, this is just one unit, but we're going to build an army with multiple units. And we're going to continue to go around here. Discontent up and down as food is coming in. Not bad. We'll need a little bit more food to train our army, but the Jarl's homestead is ready for upgrade. We want more troops, though. And it looks like we're uh, out of... Uh, Actually, I forgot we don't have any bog iron at the moment, so let's go ahead and see if we can find any of that on the map. Oh, wait a minute. Enemy army has appeared. Uh -oh. I got it! Oh, we're going to need more food to deal with these. This, this might not be the attacking army. It might just be a random army uh, for questing, so we'll, we'll see about that. Hold off enemy attacks as long as we can. We'll see how long we... Uh, are able to attack. It seems like the default settings are somewhat um, aggressive. There they are. That's an enemy army there. As you wish. Let's see if we can find some bog metal. We're looking for a dark rock deposit. That looks to be it right there. Nope. Looks like water there. Ah, there it is. Bog iron over here on this side. Perfect. All right. The Collector's Guild has gathered enough stone for now. Let's switch over there and grab the bog iron. And then we'll assign some workers to this. And we'll get another group of soldiers up for that. We need more food, though. Food's still kind of dwindling with the summer months now coming soon. Right, so now we've got two fishing docks, the hunter uh, going as well. Oh, looks like we could adjust the hunting lands here. Be a little better suited for that beautiful pack of deer. Look at that. Gorgeous. I don't know what you call them. I think it's like crows, a murder. We're going to murder them all for food. That's what they call fast food in the old days. That's That was some fast, fast food if you definitely missed your shot. Okay, let's see what else we can build to alleviate the food problem. We could definitely start fishing, or rather farming, after finishing our fishing. But we'll need to upgrade, so that'll be a good bonus eventually. Oh, it looks like they've... Um, let's see, the woodcutter's hut has successfully cut down all the trees in front of the uh, landscape there, the uh, beautiful shoreline. All right, let's continue to get wood all cut down. We're going to need this for defenses, too. It looks like they did a great job of gathering all those resources. Good job, everyone. All right, we're still waiting for a bit more food, so let's build another hunter. Definitely going to be something to slow us down if we're not careful. Build another hunter's hut here to take advantage of critters in the background. And two fishing docks here. I don't see any marker for efficiency. But we'll build another one, if we can. But it looks like we can only build it within the circle of the city, so we can't build all the way down here without ex probably expanding or upgrading our Jarl's um, encampment. Now, eventually we can build ships. This is a, a ship builder and a city builder all in one, so let's build another dock here then. We'll get that tree out of the way. And it does appear that trees will regrow. So once we've cut down an area, so long as we haven't farmed it or um, have a building occupying it, we should be able to reuse it. Gotta have some more critters around here somewhere. Gotta be deer. Well, there's more in there, so I guess the faster we harvest that meat, way. the faster we can get our army at. We're really lacking right now for an army. We've got three fishing docks going, two hunting posts going, and it's still not enough food for the moment. But we'll need about 10 in order to uh, give our boys a good feast. They need their meat. All right, we've got four available workers, two now being deployed to the docks. I think we need, we'll need five people in order to now become soldiers. So we, oh, we can now upgrade some homes here. Fantastic, let's do it. Ah, perfect. So 10 wood and two stone. Give us a very nice upgrade to our population. And those houses look fantastic. Very Valheim. <laughs> In many ways. Now the population uh, can really breathe. So they go from four to eight. So, wow, we double the size. Now, we don't want to have too many people uh, in the city because they'll 
eat way too much food. But we still need more people to fill all the jobs fully. So let's just make sure we've got all the fishing huts going. And let's make sure we've got all the hunters going. Uh, the hunter is the building here. So looks like we've got six people out hunting. Collectors doing their job. And uh, the bloomery is active. Collectors Guild looks good there. Not bringing back enough bog iron, though. Let's go ahead and assign our last worker. Oh, we're out of workers again. Great. We have to upgrade more. Well, actually, we don't. We're just waiting for more population to come in. They come in slowly. They trickle in very slowly. So if we take losses, as you wish. it's more as babies being born. So that will slow down in the winter time. So it's definitely important to plan ahead before an invasion to make sure we have more troops than we need just in case we can defend ourselves. Look at how great that looks. What a hell of a... If I told you that this was strictly a peaceful city builder, I think you'd believe me. And if I said this is strictly an RTS game with no city building, I bet people would believe it as well. Although this does a great job of going into a lot of them in detail without going too in and trying to be too much of one thing. It's great. All right, we need five people. And we'll have them spawn from there. There's our training camp again. Looking real nice. Love the shields and stuff. Good. Population will then just continue to increase. All right, let's go ahead and remove discontent by building ourselves a altar now. We'll build that in front of the Jarl's house. And that will allow us to um, buff out any sort of things that people may be angry about. Like a lack of mead. Any self-respecting Viking would be furious that we don't have that at the moment. We can build some walls too. We do have quite a bit of wood for it. But I think we're going to put that material into making a farmhouse. So we can actually, uh, well, do some farming, obviously. There's a little army over here, and it looks like a good corner to build in over there. So we're also going to try to farm over that direction, as it's one of the only few areas that we've actually cleared out. So let's build that here. Great music. It's on the par of, like, God of War or something like that. Beautiful. Almost. All right, let's get some uh, more units trained. Now we can do some more Axemen. The unit in the middle is more scouts, so we can continue to scout out things. We know there's an enemy army over there. Ah, but we have ourselves a um, some sort of a sigil or something along those lines. A rune stone, an old statue decrypting Nordic gods worshipped by settlers nearby. Some of the runes covering the stone surface shine from time to time. And there we go. Now we have a blessing on locks. So I believe we can unlock those or do something with those very soon. Oh, looks like our city is now called uh, Keflik. But, of course, that should say uh, Raptoria there. Yeah, you can type your name in at the very beginning. Anyway, doesn't matter. You can change your city name, I guess. It, it's not too big of a deal. Let's go up this way and check those mountain passes. We're now entering the, uh, yes, the Stormy Autumn. Let's go ahead and get some farming going. We need more people here. We got seven out of eight, so it looks like we've got three more people coming into the camp between those houses. And that should solve our food problem. Enemy army has appeared. I got it. Let's go ahead and deal with the... Uh, oh, that's wolves. And it looks like they're inside their little cave. Yeah. You can see their little uh, wolf's den. Yeah. All right. Let's go out and find those uh, troops. All right. Now, look at this. We can actually deploy our troops in, uh, in formations. And we can also, of course, change their aggression. We can try to play more defensively or aggressively and give our units... Um, bonuses. I got it. So since we know there's an enemy army over here, we're going to basically blitzkrieg them and see if we can find out where they're at. Wave incoming. We'll have enemies coming now. Are they attacking now or later? They're more than likely on their way now. There's the enemy camp. That has been abandoned. Nope, there's Let's enemies there. None of them alive! Get him, boys! An ambush. Nice. Got him. Another fantastic Got combat him. game based in uh, Nordic times, and also having a little bit of uh, Slavic people and whatnot, is a game called uh, Ancestors Legacy. A very, very cool uh, RTS builder as well, leaning more towards the military aspects, so that's cool. All right, somebody's going to be happy that we cleared that out, but we're not going to be happy with the enemy army invading. Attack! Looks like they have archers and axemen there. They're going to attack our people. We need more people in the village. I'm going to go ahead and unassign some villagers from falling stuff and get them immediately assigned to uh, the defense. We're getting them trained up. Our army's coming in to attack them. 
We can try to lead them away with the scouts, perhaps. But our troops are training here. They should be ready relatively quickly. Luckily, we built the well nearby, so they should be able to put that fire out. We'll get it repaired in no time. Four people here ready to go again. Continue to upgrade these houses then. And we'll have more breathing room for more troops. All right, here comes our forces now. Too cold for the farm to work, unfortunately. Kill them all. Going with that rage. Nerd rage, hit them. Everybody fights. Oh, nice. There's archers there. Kill them all. Going with that nerd rage. Looks like they were able to attack with two groups of axemen and a group of archers as well. Well, now I wish we had that military knowledge. We can now focus on what matters is those troops in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, we're also going to have to get more and more stone here. Looks like we've gathered... Well, we actually have two things of stone there, so that's good. Alright, we need more troops to be able to train. Let's see, what do we need most of? It's going to be bog iron, so let's get the... Uh, shut down the woodcutters for now. They're all becoming warriors. Let's get our forces up quickly. Uh, him down. Now, another tactic, too, is to uh, run in with your scouts and hit these uh, troops and then chase them away from your camp. But we're going straight in for a fight this time. We're going for that rage. That's none of them alive. And another wave incoming. They don't give us much breathing room at all. Our workers are working in the bloomery as fast as they can to make more weapons for our troops. Excellent. Okay, now we just need to outpace the enemy in our ability to craft an army. Not bad. We need more bog iron, though. All right, it looks like our woodcutter is set there. We'll go ahead and farm over here as soon as we can. There we go. And by that, I mean farm logs. Oh, wow. Oh, what? Wolves? Wow. What? Attack him, boys. Get him, boys. Wow, the wolves are coming in for the attack. No, don't tell me they're going to throw torches at the uh, building. We'll need 10 meat in order to uh, get everybody working there. Let's get more people assigned to the farm. And more people assigned to the well. What are the wolves doing? They're biting my longhouse? Sirs. Oh wow, we're we're we're, we're do a dog to death. <laughs> we're gonna be dog gone here. Oh boy. Pretty good settlement though. A little unlucky at our uh, ability to get bog iron at the start, but lots of good resources here actually. Looks like we've got quite a bit of hunger, but we've got plenty of buildings going, and the farm should be working. Oh look at that, we've got sheep within the or pigs within the farm, and that'll automatically produce hide for us too. So it looks like we'll be able to. Uh, continuously get hides for uh, all of our troops that way as well. Looks like we're making as much bog arm iron as we can. And we can make two armies there, but it won't be enough before the dogs get us. Died to death by dogs. 25 minutes, 18 seconds. What a run. <laughs> this was awesome. The ability to see a little bit of the city building, but also the combat at the same time. Definitely a more relentless mode with it being an endless attack mode and the defaults are a little uh, challenging if you haven't played for a while, but there's nothing stopping you from going into the campaign and learning that, and then jumping into the skirmish to learn some ways to quickly build all the things and gather all the resources, and then working your way into perhaps city building mode to quickly find out where everything is and build it even more efficiently, with perhaps survival mode being the ultimate test as it is endless. Well, thank you guys for your endless support. Thank you very much for watching the channel here today. I hope you all enjoyed. 
a wonderful comedic run and a very cool run in this immersive strategy city builder with base building, RTS, war, and naval ships too. Oh yes. If you'd like to, there's a full playthrough of the campaign on the channel as well as some other live streams. So don't miss out on more. If you're curious about this, you can see much more about the naval ships, shipbuilding, and of course the adventure in the single player campaign and fortress building coming very soon on the channel in our live streams. Don't miss out. We'll see you soon. Turn on that notification bell. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everyone. Take care, and thanks for dropping by.